Ever since we joined this church, he's been like a father figure in our lives. He's a very loving person. Like I've never, I've been to different churches. I've served God for many years, but I've not met a man like him. Hallelujah. How many of us can agree with that? He is a loving person. We are so blessed to have him. So just always stand up on your feet and put your hands together and we welcome the sun. Not everybody stand up on your feet. The Bible says, give honor where honor is due. Hallelujah. Let join together with me and we welcome the man of God. God has blessed us with a man, a wonderful person in his place. Hallelujah. Pastor Michael Gold. Now. He said, you must minister. 
Say amen. I know that the first one we have will be the last Saturday in the month of November. I you say when they giving us the team, the team for this one is fruitfulness. Everyone looking for the fruit of the womb. Please call them to come. Amen. They will conceive. In Jesus' name. Somebody said fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as I was, God was speaking, so I forgot the name. Suddenly, the Lord told me, look at his dressed for I said, no, the rain actually is God. Somebody said, Hallelujah. Don't you ever say never you have the power? Use it. The rain stopped, brethren. I'm telling you, a true life to this morning. The rain stopped. So I was not working. Now I had the energy to work. But I was older. Good. Then I stopped. I began to walk around. I began to walk around. I began to pray. After one hour, I wanted to go back home. And the Holy Spirit said to me, release the rain back. If you have the power to shut the rain, you must have the power to release. See, I release blessing. I say, in the name of Jesus, let the rain come back and begin to fall again. The moment I said that, I now got inside the house and I saw my brother wanted to go out. Then I started again. And it was very heavy. In the name of Jesus, the rain of righteousness will fall in your life. The rain of blessing will fall in this service today. The Lord said to me, as many of you who will not be distracted with focus on God, Today is a day of your miracle. Amen. You will receive miracles today. Amen. Many of you will be here today. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to make this announcement. The November 2nd, 11 a.m., there will be the meeting of all the women. Those who are here today, those who are not here, please call them to be here. And uh, it's 11 a.m. All every man must be here. And I will be the only man in your midst. Amen. Amen. I will be here too as well. We want to pray together. Bring your ideas. Bring, if you have ingredients, bring it. If you have anything in your heart, just bring it. It's an open forum. Open forum to rub minds together, to pray together, and to move forward together. This church belongs to God and belongs to everyone. Yes. Say to yourself, this church belongs to me. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Yes. So, whatever you have to say in your heart, bring the issue. Bring it what we discuss. And we have enough time to just sit down and discuss with you. By the special grace of God, I have a friend of mine here, my twin brother, Henry the Lord. Is going to be ministry to you in the power of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord will bless every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. We are calling an evangelist. He has a heart for souls. He has a heart for healing. God is going to use him mightily, and the anointing of God will flow. Everybody, rise to your feet as we welcome the pastor of love of God, love of righteousness of God, my dear friend, Pastor Michael C. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. yeah Lord, Lord, Lord. Service. It was a wonderful service. And the man of God was preaching. And when he was preaching, God said, You've got, you got a new year coming here, a new season. And when the man of God was preaching, the Lord spoke to me. He goes, I'm going to open new doors. Amen. And a scripture dropped into my spirit. I want to tell you when God opens a door, we get blessed. Amen? Amen. He opens a door of blessings. And just when God said it, this information dropped into my spirit. And I started thinking of so many people that just within a recent time got good jobs. Uh, we, we had one young lady in our church that, that, that uh, she, 
She was staying at home, and the Bills, you know, take care of the kids. You may be seated. And, and the Bills were having problems. So she went out looking for a job, and you know she got a good job, amen? That's our open door. I pray for good jobs in the name of Jesus. And then we had her, her young son named Josh, which was 17. He went to apply for a job and immediately got that job. God went over the door for you today. Amen. I feel open doors in the name of Jesus. And then there was a, there was a man that he was working in a hospital and he was working in the maintenance department and he was making good money. But he felt the lead and he applied for another job. And when he applied for that job, he applied for a few. He got that job with a, with a good increase and he went and started that job. And within a month, the other job that, that he put in for come back. And that thing was like a double blessing. All the insurance paid. I'm going to tell you, God's going to open doors today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who needs to open the door financially? Raise your hand. Amen. I believe it. So then, there was another man. And his name's Craig. And he's in your church. So not only was he having your church pray for him for an open door, he had us pray for him for an open door. And come to find out, God has blessed him and given yeah. him a good raise and given him a new job. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The Bible says in Revelation 3 8, he says, I know thy works. And I've, and I've set before thee an open door that no man can shut. Because thou art weak, but hast kept my word and not denied my name. So, so what he was talking about, that even though he was a little strength of himself, but because he kept God's word and kept his name, that God opened doors. Amen? amen. Your faithfulness is going to open doors. Amen? amen. Your faithfulness. Give the Lord a praise and clap offer. Let's go to James 1.17. Every, every good gift and every perfect gift coming down from the Father 117. Every good gift and every perfect gift coming down from the Father from above and coming down from the Father of light. With whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Amen? Amen. Now I want you to get this. When he's talking about the variables, he's relating it to a sundial. And the reason why this is important, because with a sundial, you get a shadow time. You get a weak time. You get a time that doesn't have strength. And God's saying right there, I have no shadow time. I have no weak time. I'm always at full zenith. I'm always at full power. And God's in full power for you today. Amen. Now, when God's in full power, there's an illustration that dropped into my spirit. So I asked him, I asked Brother Dapo to come, Brother Solo to come, and then we got to get to David. And so what happens is, God's always at full zenith, at full power. He's getting the people together, right? Yeah. That looks like a handsome David if I've ever seen one. Look at that little, look at that young man, David. You give the Lord a thumbs and clap off. So the first thing, come over here. Uh, so you're, you're going to be Goliath. He's Goliath. Now you got to act mean. Turn to the crowd, look mean. Uh, he's the nicest Goliath I've ever seen in my life. He couldn't scare anybody. Look, stand, uh, you stand on this step right here, Goliath. Right? This is a nice Goliath. Now, now Brother Ben, will you stand behind him? And, and you raise your hands up in the air. Right? Just like that. And, and David, handsome David, come on over here. Come on over here. Now, now you got to remember, you, first let everybody see you. Man, he's good looking, isn't he? He's looking sharp. He's looking sharp. Get some pictures. Get some pictures of his hands. You look good, man. 
uh, Lloyd and David. He's a representative David in the Bible. And, and the thing is, what happened is, the army of Israel saw Goliath and saw him as being too powerful to be able to defeat. And he saw that, that that man can carry all that armor. There's no possible way that we can defeat him because they were looking in the natural. But David, oh, David. See, what happened is, in the natural, we see mean Goliath. Give him a look, mean Goliath. We can that's mean, right? We see mean Goliath in the natural, and we get scared, maybe, and we run away because we, in the natural, things look too big for us. But David, but David, look that way, David. But David sees past Goliath. Raise your arms up, brother. And he sees the God behind Goliath. God bless you guys. And the problem, the problem we can have is we see our situation being too big for us. I mean, and, and there's no possible way out. You know, when you talk about God opening a way in the wilderness, I started thinking too. You know, when there's a path of destiny and God gives us a path of destiny, I started thinking of the, the Red Sea. So God calls you out. He calls you out of bondage. He calls you out of persecution. And next thing you know, he brings you up to stand in front of a Red Sea. And you think, what can I do? How can I get to my destiny? How can I get to my promised land? I want to tell you, God will part that problem in half, amen? Yeah. God will part that Red Sea that you can walk on over in dry land, amen? Yeah. Give the Lord a praise of God. But before we share that, um, I wanted to have the choir sing a song here. And I know I've kind of changed mood, but I, we need to praise the Lord. So, he won't need bye bye, too, too bye bye, he won't need bye bye.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I want to pray at the end for some people for, for the for the oak for jobs, and I want to pray for people for miracles, for healings. But at this time, I want to mention a couple things as a pastor. And, and most of the time, I come as an evangelist. And I talk about the great miracle signs and wonders that God's not only done, but He's doing. And I'm going to do that. But today, I just wanted to mention a couple things as a pastor. And I wanted you to turn to to Acts, but it is about receiving, and it's about, it's about following the will of God in our life that we never make a mistake. And, and when you take some of these nuggets, they help, they help gird you and strengthen you and put you on a sound path. See, it's, it's, it's great to shout, but it's also good to get those nuggets. So if we can read that, if somebody want to read that, Acts 1, 23 through 26.
And then when I did his will, when I did his will, I got to see the glory with Pastor Mike on the mission field. When we did his will, I got to see the glory with, 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 with Reverend Pondy on the mission field. When I got to do his will, I tell you, the open doors come. God has got open doors for you today, amen? amen. He's got open doors for you today. Amen. I wanted to say, I've never, the anointing, it, I want to re rephrase this. The anointing's on me to pray for people for jobs. But my anointing is never, I never sit there and worry about myself for money. God's always supplied my needs. Amen. Now the pastor never told me to say this. I'm giving you pastor stuff. Tithe. The Bible says to tithe. Give your tithe to the storehouse. Amen. Amen. And all the years I've pastored, and before I pastored, I was an elder for eight years. And I'm going to tell you, everybody, everybody that tithe did better off financially. How come I don't hear anybody shout? How come I don't hear anybody shout? And I'm going to tell you, I, I've seen it so much, the blessing to God. The only reason I'm saying this is because trust God. Prove God. Step out and trust Him. Amen? And I, I'm not one that pushes on tithing, but I want to tell you, everybody in our church that tithes is blessed more than the others. Amen? Amen. And if you're struggling, give what you can and prove God. Do you know when I stepped out uh, in ministry, I, mean, uh, I was 32 years old when I got saved. I got saved July 3rd, 1992. Now I'm going to tell you how old I am. Figure it out and tell me how old I am. Amen. You match up the years with the gray. So, so, so the thing is, when I, when I had it, there was tragedies in my life. There was tragedies, and God's turned it all around, so I thank the Lord. There was tragedies, I lost my job, there was health problems, and I got Jesus. But when I got Jesus, I started going to church. And if somebody preached on giving, I gave. If they preached on prayer, I prayed. If they preached on fasting, I fasted. Amen? Amen. Now, the people that knew me knew that I was in big financial problems because of the tragedy that was going on in my life and family. And I started tithing because the pastor said to tithe. Do you know within six months to a year, my whole financial problem turned around? Yeah. My Because I had one foot in and I had one foot out. 
I was going to church and I was still trying to hang with my buddies. How I was, I was feeling the call of God, but then I was trying to, to live in the world. See, I wasn't growing up in church. I, I didn't have a church background. I didn't have somebody pouring into me. But I had a, once I gave my heart to God in a tragic time, I felt this pull on my heartstrings. We've all felt that wonderful pull, amen? amen. Hallelujah. And what I did, what I did, there was about six, well, I'll tell you what happened during this time too. I was going to church as much as I could. I was going out a little bit, and I, and I, I, I was trying to figure out what I wanted for, for a few months. And I went to Perry Stone meeting, which he's on TV. And Perry Stone was praying for everybody to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was going up every day, every day to the altar to receive it. And when people started putting their hands on me, I started thinking about it. And the presence of God would come off me. And I started going. So like the third night that I was in that revival, Perry Stone, and little did I know, I had a spine fusion. My back was spine fusion. I had problems with my back. Perry Stone went like this. Look, the Holy Spirit's on him. And when he did, my feet went straight out. And I landed on my back, and I come up speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what I'm saying is, even though I was struggling, I was receiving, because I was still searching God. And then, when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, the next day, I was speaking in tongues so much, I could hardly even speak English. I'm riding down the road. He cut him a son, but he got so pretty. He kept him a son. Yes, say, not go, not go. He don't do it with a guy. He put him a say out of a guy. I'm riding down the road and I'm praying. And right then, the Lord spoke to me and he showed me how he took care of me through my years as being younger. God's taking care of me, brought to you in this point. Amen? Amen. And, and how that somebody was going to baptize me in water. I saw a vision of the person. I even said who it was. The person never baptized anybody outside. And God said he was going to baptize me outside in a pond, and he did. And then the third thing, he warned me about somebody that was going to come against me. How many people know that everything happened? Now, what I'm trying to say is, about within that three months, Pastor Mike, in three months, hear this, because this is where I'm going to get to the Word of God here on, on this point. I said, Lord, I'm tired of having one foot in and one foot out. I want to give you everything. And when I did that, Pastor Mike, my life changed. My life changed. And I'm pastoring now instead of, instead of just with the healing. Now, now listen to this. If you go to John chapter 5, there was a man with an infirmity for 38 years. He had a terrible infirmity. Um, and, and Jesus healed him in John chapter 5. So when Jesus healed him, uh, uh, that was at the pool of Bethesda. When Jesus healed him, then now he got his healing. And if you look at verse 14, John chapter 5, verse 14, Jesus saw him in the temple. And when he saw him in the temple, he said to the man, Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. And Pastor Mike, do you know what that meant to me? That meant to me what happened to me when I was younger. And I had one foot in and one foot out. And I realized right then that right there he's talking about sin. And if you sin, a worse thing comes on you. That sin opens up the door from attack from the enemy. I'm preaching good. I want, I want God's doors open. I want the enemy's doors closed. We want God's doors open. And we want the enemy doors closed. We want God's doors open. Open your doors, God. And close the doors of the enemy. In Jesus' name. And sometimes... I've got friends and people I minister to, and we pray for God's blessings, but the problem is they haven't closed the doors to the enemy. They haven't closed the door. So he says, sin not, 
Let the worst thing come upon you. And you know what it reminds me of? When I get around Pastor Floyd, I make sure I can quote scripture. <laughs> I make sure I got everything right when I read him and, and Pastor Shaw. I don't have no, no wrong thoughts, nothing. You know, like I go to church on Sunday, I make sure I get my prayer on the way to church. But then what about Monday? Right. Well, well, what about what about Tuesday? Do, 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 do I allow people at work to talk about, to tell dirty jokes? And do I stand there and listen to it? Do, 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 do I turn on an R-rated show when I'm home and think it's okay because, because it's okay and sanctioned by the, the TV association? Or do I feel the quickening of the Holy Spirit and say, I need to change that channel? As a married man, do I look at another woman or realize I'm married and the only one I look at is my wife? That's right. That's right. Oh, I preach you good right here. Good. The one I cherish is the one that God gave me. That's right. That's the one I look at. That's the one I look at. That's who God gave me. My eyes don't drift to another woman. I don't allow it. There's no open door here to come. Now, let me tell you something that might sound funny, but, but it's truthful. One thing is in, in Genesis, there was an apple that kept Adam and Eve off their destiny. So I always say, I don't want an apple to keep me off my destiny. Amen? Amen. Say, say, no apple's going to stop my destiny. Now, I'm going to go a little further. Listen to this. Not only no apple, no taco sauce is going to keep me off my destiny, and no, no splendor is going to keep me off my destiny. And why do I say that? Because I don't worry about what he sees or she sees. I worry about what God sees. And now you got to hear this. I I'm, I'm, I'm like tacos. So I'll go eat taco sauce. So then I found at the grocery store, they had these frozen soft tacos. So I bought these frozen soft tacos, and I didn't have any taco sauce. So on mine, I could get taco sauce from Taco Bell. I'm like, I can't do that. That's not right. I knew they wouldn't see it if I went and bought tacos and grabbed a handful, but God would see it. <laughs> so, so, come on now. So, so what I did was, I found out my older son uh, uses hot crystal taco sauce. So I went up the store, went all the way up the store to buy taco sauce, got this hot sauce, put it on the tacos, it was too hot for me. So now I'm still not done. Now I gotta ride back up to another store and find a mild taco sauce. So I went up there with mild taco sauce and I mixed it with the hot taco sauce and I got just what I need. But you know what? The closer I get with God, I'm not worried about what man sees. That's right. I'm worried about what God sees. Yes, Lord. Uh, I, 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 if, you're, if you're watching a show you shouldn't watch, if you're part of a joke you shouldn't be a part of, if you're criticizing somebody who shouldn't, he might not know everything you know, but God knows everything you know. And I don't want. So now let me get back to the splendor before I finish. So now I go to Australia. And when I go to Australia, the room's expensive, right? So I'm staying in this room, and next to, next to the hotel is this place that has four restaurants, and they own the hotel. And so I'm going there to eat, and my hotel doesn't have splendors what I use in my hotel room. I walk down to the, to the grocery store, they're like a, like, sort of like a 7-Eleven with a different name. They don't have Splenda. So I was in the restaurant, and I said to the lady, you've got Splenda. They own the hotel. I said, can I grab five extra packs of Splenda? She said, no. <laughs> you know, I would not take that Splenda. I would not. I wouldn't take it. I'm not going to self-justify sin because I paid money for a movie. So what I did is I went back to the hotel 
I kind of made a joke out of it and said, is there any way you can help me get Splenda? The next day they had a box of Splenda. Hallelujah. So now I'm ministering to you today as a pastor. So, oh, I want to see the open doors. I want to see revival in your life. I want to see the blessings of God fall down upon you. I want you to have the best job. I want you healed. But all at the same time, if I know that there's an open door for attacking the enemy, if there's a crack in your life, I pray to God that that crack is closed in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. So when Jesus said to the man that he just healed, he says, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. Yeah. That's what was happening to me, Pastor Mike. For that first few months, I had a foot in and a foot out. I was allowing things in my life. And when I was allowing it in, I couldn't get the fullness of God. But when I gave everything to God, my whole life turned around. Physically, financially, ministerially, amen. Give the Lord a praise and talk of And here's another thing. Now I'm pastoring, I'm sharing pastor stuff today instead of evangelism. Here's one thing. This 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 is less with the wonderful Nigerian people and more with the with the uh, people that have been in America so many years. That they've got a wrong thinking. And that thought is, it's almost like Americans think God works for them. And God doesn't work for us. We serve God. Amen. So, so it's, it's not like, Lord, I don't go to church. I do my own will. And then all of a sudden, I need a car. God, I need a car. Give me a car. God, I need this. Give me that. What he does is when you're faithful to God, he'll supply all your need. Amen? Amen. So, to kind of get done with the pastoral part of this, uh, I'd like to just say to everybody, when, when I'm preaching, is there cracks of doors from the enemy that's in your life? If you watch things you shouldn't watch, I'm not saying that you didn't confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'm saying, are you watching things you shouldn't say? Have you, have you criticized somebody you shouldn't criticize? Have you been a part of saying bad jokes? Or you're looking around at another man and you're married. Or you're looking around at another woman and you're married. And your eyes are only supposed to be on your loved one. If there's a crack or a door, we need to close that today. Right. And you know how you close it? You give it to Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't want you to say it out loud. But right now, Pastor, come up here for a second. Would you get all eyes, eyes closed and all heads bowed? And all heads bowed, all eyes closed. Close your eyes and bow your head. If you've got a, if you've got a crack or an open door, and there's an area in your life that you say, God, there's an area in my life I want help with. Today I want to get real. Matter of fact, open your eyes and look at me first. Let's get real. Let's get real. That's what I want to call getting real. Get real with God. Say, there's an area of my life I want God to help me with. If you've got an area, raise your hand. Come on now. I'm not the only one in here getting real. Amen? Amen. Now let's repeat a prayer for me. Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. This day, Lord. I'm getting real. There's areas of my life, Lord, that I'm giving to you. Help me, Jesus. I repent of my sin. I declare you as Lord. And Lord of my life. I'm closing doors today in Jesus' name. The Bible says, if you sin willfully, if you have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sin. That means if you're sinning and you know not to, that sacrifice of Calvary is not applied. Amen? Yeah. Give the Lord a praise and clap on. <laughs> Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. Never give it up on me. I repent of my sin. 
I confess you as Lord and Lord of my life. I didn't have the freedom. And so many times we counsel people and we talk about God's blessings. We do want your blessings. But the problem that's coming against you is not the blessings that aren't there. It's the open door for the attack. Today the door is closed. Amen. Today in the world that you, you see what they try to stop out. If, if you look, it says in Acts 3, 6, when, it, when uh, Peter and John saw the man at the gate called Beautiful, and they, they saw him and said, Silver and gold have thy none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. It's at that name. And in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's at the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 It says in Acts 4.18 that they tried to, to shut them up and he said, don't speak or teach. Don't teach or preach in that name anymore because the name is making a difference. It's at the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the apostle said in Acts, I think it was 4, 29 through 31, he says, or is it 31 through 35, he says, And now, Lord, behold their threatening, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness we may speak thy word, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders shall be done in the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they prayed, the place shook. It shook and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues. And the name of Jesus, devils trouble. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 They want to try to stop us from using that name. Even when I was at work, they come and get my immediate boss loved me. But the other boss has said that I was too strong of a Christian. And the reason why is because I use the name Jesus. You could say, well, we're just praying. I, I had the, the CEO's corporate lawyer call my boss and told me not to use the name of Jesus. Guess what name makes a difference? Jesus. Jesus. Jesse. 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 Jesse, 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 Jesse. When we were, when we were on the mission field, there was two, went out and asked all those that were totally deaf and dumb to come out and blinded eyes. And God healed two, two people at the name of Jesse, in the name of Jesus, that were totally deaf and dumb. And then a third man come up 20 minutes later. And when he come up 20 minutes later, he started pushing his way through the crowd. He was totally got the bell because he saw the other ones healed and they testified. So the people in the crowd knew him because it was close by and they walked. And they were testifying and the place was going wild. And God opened this lady's eye. And when he opened this lady's eye, the place was going wild. And, and it was all done at the name of Jesus. Jesus. At the name of Jesu, amen? amen? And when it was done, the man pushed his way in. And we prayed in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesu. We said, we commanded the spirit of infirmity to be gone. 
prepare when we come in and it's the, the, the death is to be going and it's death and death for him to speak. And you know, at that time, that's the, probably the first time that the, the devil spoke so audibly to me. When the devil said to me, you can't cast me out. And I said, yes, I can. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command that dumb and deaf spirit to come out in the name of Jesse. And I said ten times in each year, Jesse, 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 Jesse. And his ears open right up. Give the Lord a praise and practice. I'm going to tell you, you know, Pastor, we memorize scripture. I'm going to give you one thing to say. If you can memorize anything, say one word. Memorize the name of Jesus. I don't care where you're at at midnight hour, and it feels like the world's coming in on you, call out to Jesus. Amen? If your kids are going through a trouble, and it feels like, what am I going to do with my kids? Call on the name of Jesus. It's not the keys of hell and death. If you feel like you can't get through this sickness or this torment, just remember, at the name of Jesus, healing comes. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we raise to our feet? Hallelujah. 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 I feel to, to pray for those that need a financial miracle. You need a job or a financial miracle. And I'm believing for that open door today in the name of Jesus. I'm believing by the end of next month that you get your miracle, amen? amen. And then, Sister Dorcas, yes. would you come up here? Can we get some prayer warriors, some ladies to pray for her? Would you raise your hands? Can we pray for you? Can you all start forth your hands? Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this woman of God that sold out for one of the remnant, the faithful of God, that sold out for Jesus. I pray for God, Lord, for increase in the name of Jesus. From the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. And God, whatever need she has, I pray that you meet that need in the name of Jesus. And God, if she's got a physical need, I pray for you to God heal and touch in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 Touch your Holy Ghost! Touch your Holy Ghost! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
power like this. I want God to give me power. Raise up your hands. I want God to give me power. He will give it to you. Close your eyes. Father, we thank you, Holy Name. Thank you because you are the God of power. You have all the strength. All power in heaven belongs unto you. The Bible says, Thou not known as Thou not heard that the everlasting Father, the God of the hands of the affainted not, and there is no searching of His understanding. He gives power to the faint. In the name of Jesus, receive power. Receive power in Jesus' name. Receive power for your destiny in Jesus' name. Receive power to make work in Jesus' name. Receive power to rise up in Jesus' name. Receive power to make headway in Jesus' name. The Lord will lift you up. The Lord will lift you up. The Lord will lift you up. You will go higher. You will move forward. It shall be well with you. So shall it be. Thank you, blessed Father. Blessed be your holy name. As you're closing your eyes now, you will feel a hand laid upon your head. Please close your eyes. Father, we thank you for your power here. Thank you for your presence. In the name of Jesus, let the hand you have given this church upon everyone that needs your power. At this very moment, let the hand on them. Yes. Is the power of the Lord. The hand of God is coming upon you. Let the hand of God is coming upon you. Receive divine touch from heaven. 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 your brain is made right again. Whatever yeah. anything that is wrong in your body, anything missing in your body, God is expressing it now. Yeah. Whatever it is that is missing in your life, the Lord is putting it back again in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Lord. The Lord of Abraham, I seek a Jehovah is the